Okay, so what's gone up onto the onto the Learn site in, in terms of the, um, the videos? So last week there was uh, some reps from Revolution Roofing that came in for, for one of my classes and recorded that and, and put that up. And that's and they do some they do some fairly interesting stuff. Um, so they've they've got a whole whole series of role formers and they they step outside the, the bounds of, of what's standard. Jane, did you have you had a look at that video for Res Revolution Roofing that I that I put up onto the onto the playlist for for that? Yeah, that that's fine. But but it's a it's a it's a pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good presentation, pretty good resource and, and discussion about some new products and things that are happening in, in terms of sheet claddings, etc. So I won't go through all that again. But if you can. Have a look at the have a look at the recordings for for that that video. I suggest you have a have a good watch of that. Um, and so there's there's also that that video up from Chevron as well. So we'll but what we'll have a look at now are commercial cladding materials, and that and as you know as we keep keep sort of saying there's 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 a uh, there's no clear distinction between commercial or residential cladding, cladding materials or, or materials in, in general. Um, a lot of you, you high-end residential are using commercial products, etc. So of those, of those products, you've got cladding materials that are composite materials. So that's where you get a composite of several things together. So that, that may be a, a composite of um, uh, like some poly, poly products like polypropylene, polyethylene, etc., bonded with certain aggregates. So you've so you've got things like polycrete. Polycrete is typically used for a lot of your things like service pits and and things like that. Um, but yeah, there's um, there are uh, what's the can I think of the brand brand of it? No, I'll, I'll see if I can remember later on. So you've got various different poly products used for, for wall sheeting as well. And also the, the now infamous um, aluminium, aluminium sandwich panel claddings and the, and the various different uh, brands of those. So, so Aluka Bond is, is well known, but, but Mitsubishi also did an aluminium sandwich panel cladding as well. And there, there are various different, different brands. There's... There's also also a new one that's just come onto the market now as well. So there's there's new bond wall cladding, and I I had a look at that only on on Tuesday. So there's, there hasn't been anything come up here. But if we do a do a search for new bond, um, Shall we do do new bond fireproof? Some details here for visit the website. So this is a this is a new thing. Uh, uh, look, I have to I have to spend a bit of time in looking looking at looking at this. Uh, it's, yeah. So there's. So there's the fairly infamous um, composite panels that have polyethylene core and aluminium on the outside. So normally the components can be physically identified as exhibit an interface between one another. So there's that, but but now in the in the race to provide claddings that that have a a modern, um, I'll say it, a, 
a, a sleek modern appearance to them without without being flammable. We've got products coming onto the market now that are like this aluminium sandwich panel, except instead of polyethylene between there, they have this web of, of aluminium in between. So that, that web of aluminium can still be broken and bent in, in certain fashions, but it's not flammable. I haven't haven't seen any of that stuff in practice. I don't see how how easily it bends and how how nicely it bends. The the real benefit of the the um, polyethylene core was that you could get it to bend in a really nice smooth um, radius, and you could do some really tight uh, radar as well at the at the ends of panels. We're yet to see how the how the um, aluminium web filling works for that. Um, also, there is a, and I'll, um, I'm not sure if I've provided a link to it, but had, did anybody see that there was a Four Corners documentary on aluminium sandwich panel coating? You, yeah. Tommy, you've seen that? Yeah, yeah from last, last semester. Yeah. Jane and Christian, have you seen that Four Corners documentary? I did hear about it. Did you hear about it? Yeah, it's look. Basically, you're not going to be specifying aluminium sandwich panel cladding on buildings now, anyhow, with with the polyethylene core. So I guess it's it's a bit of a, um, I say it's so it's not not particularly relevant to you anymore. But there was so there was what happened was there was the fire, there was the there was the major fire for the Grenfell Tower over in over in London that. Um, that sort of shone a spotlight on this, but then there had been several several fires before that, significant fires um, that had started grabbing the attention of fire services about the place. And then, and then after that fire, then Four Corners did a documentary on the use of that aluminium sandwich panel cladding and the and the history of it and the extent of its its specification, etc. And that watching that documentary will freak you out. But well, in in terms of okay. This is this is the extent to which all of this cladding has, has been used. This is how how flammable it is, etc. But um, yeah, following following on from that from that documentary, and then a Senate inquiry into the use of that that cladding material. As we know now, that we really can't be specifying it because insurance companies won't insure it, and banks won't won't lend on projects that, that use it. Didn't they have to reclad the whole? New Queensland Children's School had to tear down all the cladding inside or something. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah. They were yeah. at the same time. Right. Okay. Yeah, they were just about to open it and then worked out that it was bad cladding and had to tear it all down and used it. Yeah, right. But yeah, do you know when that was for the Queensland Children's Hospital? Uh, Earlier this year or last year. Yeah. Yeah, so that would that would have that would have lined up then probably with that Senate inquiry. So, so yeah, at that yeah. So to, so just after the Grenfell Tower that Grenfell Tower fire, it all became in the spotlight, and there was a lot of focus on it. Our our new hospital in Adelaide was also being built at that time as well, and and certainly when all those plans and specifications went through, it was. So they had um, fire safety engineers and private certifiers say, yes, this cladding is fine to use, but then, you know, some some lag of, of months, etc., before construction starts, then um, then all this goes down with the uh, with the aluminium sandwich panel cladding, and that had to all be reviewed for, for our hospital here as well. And and so they choose they still chose to use a cladding with a polyethylene core. In there, but one with fire retardants in the polyethylene core. Now, how effective that is, or not effective it is, is I guess is a bit up for debate. Because basically, the the rules the rules that govern the use of this cladding are that so within the NCC it says for any external cladding material on now I'm not sure exactly what the height of the building is, but so of a of a certain height, a certain class of construction, 
your external cladding has to be non-combustible. Now, to define non-combustible, I, uh, is it? I think it's AS fifteen thirty, part one is the is the test for the non-combustibility. Now, AS fifteen thirty part one test means is a is a test whereby they put that material into a furnace, and if it ignites within that ten seconds or so, it's classed, or within 30 seconds it's classed as combustible. You put just about anything into a furnace of those, those high, yeah, that high temperature, give it 30 seconds, it will combust. So there are very few products that can actually pass that test, including paints and, and things like that. And so, so the argument has been that what we have is we have an Australian standard which has been adopted by the NCC, which is really not very applicable. What it does, it just rules out just about everything except for sheet, like sheet steel cladding, fibre cement sheet cladding, um, uh, sort of uh, tilt up concrete, etc. All, all the, the thoroughly non combustible materials. And so, because that Australian standard was very hard to, to comply with, then certifiers were ignoring that and certifying these things. And, and still on our on our hospital here in Adelaide, we have an, a sandwich panel cladding which has fire retardants in it. But look, and I, I I can't I probably shouldn't speak out of turn, but I imagine that that would not pass that that non combustibility test. So, but it's to the extent that I guess a an, an engineer will sign off on that and certify that as so a fire safety engineer. We'll do that. I go to the swimming centre, Marion Swimming Centre, mm -hmm. and that's basically all it is. It's cladding for steel frame in there. Because I always look at it when I go for a swim in the mornings. Yeah. It's just completely steel frame and cladding. It's hardly any concrete in there. Yeah, yeah. And and what sort of cladding is, is that, do you know? Um, inside on the walls, it's like a, a cladding that's steel. It must be steel. Um, because it's got holes in well, it. Oh yes, yeah. So yeah, it's like so perforated sheet. Perforated sheet. Yeah. I don't know what it is on the outside though. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so Aluka Bond and Ali Core are, are not only applicable to building and construction industry, but also for corporate identity programs, signage, etc. And so you've got. You've got these products which are an aluminium mesh inside and then an aluminium sandwiches, well, aluminium leaves bonded either side, so for, for lower combustibility, or ones with, with um, polyethylene core, and then you've also got the, the polyethylene core with um, mineral fibre in there to help minimise its, its combustibility. Certainly, it was a very popular product because it, you know, enabled. Um, yeah, it was very easy to use, very lightweight, and very, very modern appearance. So that's. Um, yeah, what was the old building called? Does anyone? That uh, was the Etzer. It was Etzer, was it? Yeah. So, so on on Green Hill Road, on the on the edge of the city there. What's that? Yeah, no, yeah, Green Hill Road. Yeah. 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 Did they? <laughs> so first of all, it was, it was full of asbestos. They had full of asbestos out. Now it's covered with aluminium sandwich panel cladding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cheap. Yeah. 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 So, look, we'll, we'll flick through this really quickly because it's basically not going to be specifying. But the takeaway from this is that in this mad rush to get rid of aluminium sandwich panel cladding, there will be claddings that, that take take their place and claddings that perform in a very similar sense because it's you know it's handy. It's well, it's very uh, very easy for, for architects and designers and builders. So various different ways of, of, of fixing it. There's flat stick method, fixed cassette system and then a looper fix system. So there's not a great deal of difference between those two. And we'll we'll show show those further on. So 
finishes poly oh, van, vanilla dean fluoride paint that's painted painted surface which is extremely good gloss and color retention um, the product is water resistant shock resistant vibration absorbent and easy to install flat stick method is whereby you have um, top hat sections fixed to either your framing or a substrate and then um, a, two, a double sided tape onto that top hat section and then a, a mastic sealer between those so so very very simple simple way of fixing what that requires is treatment at the end of the panels so a cut in here and and a, and a tight radius bent to that panel right at the end to give a smooth surface to that joint. The fixed cassette system is whereby you have have an aluminium structure once again fixed to your top hat sections which are fixed to your substrate. They will actually bond or they, they actually fix the ends of the Aluka bond panels in there and then you've got a, a backing rod and then a mastic sealer once again. This has, has greater retention ability of the panels, so it, it grabs, it actually mechanically grabs the panels to, to stop them being being pulled out, so for, for higher wind areas. And then, then the Alucafix system, very similar once again, but a far deeper profile of aluminium backing channel, and the panels are turned further in to the system, and backing rod and mastic once again. Um, so here, search product information determines standard thickness, etc. We won't, won't go in, into all that because nobody's going to be, be specifying it. So, so we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll see what, what products come out to replace that um, panel, panel systems like, like a loop bond. Um, but at the moment, um, you've got um, other, other systems being adopted like fiber cement sheet cladding with gloss coatings on them and, and um, mild steel sheeting products. Another really interesting cladding material so, or material used for the envelope of commercial constructions is Danpalon. So you guys would have seen the Danpalon last week as we went around the tape. I'll show you that, that later on. Today, it's so it's basically a large core flute material that enables light to come through, and but restricts UV light. So it's really good for things like um, verandas. What's that? Swimming centre. Okay, so that's been used on the Marion Swimming Centre. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, so the the real benefit of of that that damper on is that, that uh, it enables quite large spans, but um, spans that are much, much bigger than your standard alcinite sheeting or laser light sheeting. Do you guys know what alcinite is when I, when I mention alcinite or laser light? So the fiber cement, and the plastic fiber, one that they used to use? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's alcinite, so it's, so, it's a so it's a corrugated profile. They're translucent, and that had a little bit of had some fibers bonded in to this this resin, and then then laser light is the is the newer version of that. It's some sort of poly poly product once again formed into a corrugated profile that that's used for skylights um, in in factories etc. or or um, or for verandas where you want want light coming through. Is, have you guys seen those? Yeah, you've seen them. Yeah, and so the thing with, with laser light is that you it also requires that you have with your skylights you have mesh under there. So if you're doing if you're using that as skylight bits in on, on a factory roof, for example, you have to put mesh underneath it. So that's in case people are walking walking on the roof when they step on one of those clear panels, yeah, they'll they'll go go straight through or they may go straight through and it's to protect people falling through. So you have to put mesh underneath them. Um, 
there was one thing that didn't make it into the video for, for Revolution Roofing, and it's, it's another product that they're working on at the moment. I'm pretty sure there are some samples of that sitting on David's desk over in the staff room. I'll grab grab those as well to show you that later on. It's it's like it's like Dampalon meets um, your standard standard sheeting. So, but yeah, Dampalon that has a concealed fixing system, and as I said before, it can it can achieve very large spans. So you can span long distances with it without fixing, but the limitations are with the wind uplift on it. I was asked to to have a look at using that for a veranda whereby um, the or well, the reason reason the, the owner of this property was interested in using it for this veranda is because it can achieve large spans without without fixing, they wanted to have no purlins in this veranda, so they wanted to have um, have a have a fascia, a, a ridge, and then portal frame between those, and then then dample on sheeting between the fascia and the ridge to span those those distances because it was because it can span those distances. The the issue we ran into with that was for wind uplift for the for the tie down and for the fixing. The way that these panels are fixed is that you've got these little brackets here, and then that dample on sheeting will go on there, and then you've got the clip that goes over the top that holds those dample on sheets into our fixing. Those fixing points can only, um, now I don't have the data on that, but there's only a certain amount of kilonewtons of uplift that they can resist. And so, so because if you don't have any intermediate fixings, the kilonewtons that, that wind apply to that to that sheeting exceeds what the what their uplift capabilities are. So, despite the fact that you can achieve long spans in it, you still need to have intermediate fixing points for it. So, so it does. Yeah. So although yeah, so although it has has some has many other sort of great great features you st you still need to be running intermediate purlins for that for that tie down but it has that concealed fixing system uh, a positive mechanical lock between sheets ensures impact compliance so each sheet is essentially joined together because we have we have these these uh, backward facing barbs and then the top clip clips on to those uh, with, with uh, barbs that face face the, the corresponding direction, which locks all of those those sheets together and makes them work in concert with each other. So it works very well for that for impact resistance for walls and things like that. Um, yeah, 100% watertight. So freeform glazing to suit many structural shapes, that's also another benefit of it, it can be curved. And so you can use it for applications like this where you want to have a curved roof, for example. Although you can you can also achieve that curving with other clear sheeting products as well. So you could for for this for this scenario you could just as well use like the old laser light sheeting for that as well. But why why would you use Dampalon? For that, rather than just standard laser light sheeting, do you think? I think probably the, yeah the most important convince the, the point which could convince a client mostly is probably aesthetics of it. Um, but uh, Jane, what did you? Yes, much stronger. Yeah, so so that will be trafficable. On that roof, you'll be able to be able to walk on that on that roof and, and clean that and clean that roof with the with the asinite sheeting or so you you couldn't. Any other ideas why why you use it? Or actually, I think it I think it, uh, it well you've got various different colours of it and it. And I think in the main it, it allows less light through. 
But the most, but but in regards to that light, what it does block um, is UV light. So with a lot of those old clear sheeting products, you actually got a lot of radiant heat through there. So they got very hot underneath. And certainly, if you're doing a curved roof structure like this that doesn't have a, red, a ridge and any capability for ventilation of that ridge, this one's got some sort of square section in here that may be a vent, don't know. But if you don't have any capability for, for venting in one of those old, you, and using the old pump machine, they actually get very hot underneath. And so, so Dapalon, it provides uh, insulation because we've got um, encapsulated air in there and, and separation of components, but then also blocks a lot of that, that UV light and the heat that would come through. And I've seen some really good uses of it as well, like like the well I haven't seen the swimming centre you, you refer to, but yeah. 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 Um, but I've seen some great applications of it for, for walling. One, one, I say it's that unfortunate, look, I guess it's not for me to, to say whether it's fortunate or unfortunate. One limitation is in, in use in residential architecture, though, because within the NCC, you are required to have a certain level of insulation in your walls. And although it provides a certain level of insulation, it doesn't nearly meet that... that um, that R1.5 or, or 2.3, depending on what your, your climate zone is. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a fantastic thing for using in, in walling situations, but it just doesn't provide that the insulation required. So you can still use it in commercial applications, because commercial applications, it's less prescriptive in that way, and you can have engineers specify, OK, these, this is the, this is the heating and cooling performance of this building. It works within the, within the boundaries within the limitations of that, and so it can be used for those commercial product uh, situations. But yeah, it's also something I think uh, could be awesome in, in residential architecture apart from that, that limitation. The other thing, um, compressed fibre cement sheet, uh, compressed fibre cement sheeting. So I, I assume it's probably a very good time to be a fibre cement sheet manufacturer. Because there, I guess, recently there, there's been been a lot of use of this this product, these these sorts of products. Anyhow, like so, you've got um, Scion Matrix, and all your um, what's it called it? Express Panel, I think is is the name for the for the CSR version of that, where you have express jointed systems. Those express jointed systems can get used with either coatings that are applied to that fibre cement sheet um, on site, so some fairly glossy coatings or, or any form of, form of coating or appearance you want, or they can be pre-manufactured with, with coatings on them to actually have a very, very modern form of appearance and very similar fixing essentially to like, like the Aluka Bond cladding systems as well. What you don't, what you don't get with the, the fibre cement sheet cladding is the ability to, to curve those materials in a nice radius. They don't, you know, they they'll only curve for a very slight sort of radius, and then, um, and also something I haven't seen on on the manufacturer's websites are details that relate to that as well. So so they may not they may not guarantee um, such such details. Uh, as installed on site. So yeah, so this example is commercial express wall by Cementel. Um, so, so immune to permanent water damage in both short and long term exposure, as long as the details have been done correctly. Will not rot, burn, or corrode. So it is unaffected by termites, air, steam, salt, and sunlight and not adversely affected over a temperature range of 0 to 95 degrees Celsius. So if we are, well, I guess temperatures dip below 0 in, in some, some situations, but if we're getting up anywhere near that 95 degrees Celsius, the last thing we'd be thinking about is the cladding. 
Uh, wall cladding systems often support on either uh, main structure where the walls uh, load bearing, so masonry walls or precast panels, or more often on non-load bearing secondary su structure such as light gauge, steel framing, timber framing, and wall girds. So timber framing we probably all, under all understand, light gauge, steel framing we all understand. Does everybody know what a girt is? So girts are the horizontal members on a on a frame, typically used with portal frames. So we've got we've got our large that's I'll use that marker. Um, we've got uh, I'll show you this on a bit of an angle. So that's one portal frame happening there, and then we've got another portal frame happening in the distance, like this, and, and another one, you know, another one happening here, like that, for example, and then our, our land is heading off like that. Our girts are these members that go along there, and th this will be our fascia that heads, heads there, so these are our girts, and these ones are our purlins. So typically, your girts are the same materials that your, your purlins are. They may not be, because they, they have different loads acting upon them. Your, your purlins have gravi gravitational loads acting upon them. Your girts have wind loads acting upon them. So it's about the calculation of those, those forces. But these are called girts. So within commercial construction, you do have elements like like portal frames or by steel columns, concrete columns, etc., from which horizontal girts are fixed. And then typically with one of these types of cladding systems, you then have top hat sections joined on there like that, and then your then your sheeting products go on those top hat sections like that. However, however you want to want to arrange them. One way of designing with these fibre cement sheet products as well, or an important consideration, is to think about where your doors and windows are going and how that works in with your with your fibre cement sheets. What you want to avoid doing is cutting sheets like that. Certainly, you know, certainly you can, but if you if you are limiting all your cuts to more to cuts like that, for example. And then you can work with configurations of those. It it uh, is much easier on site. Oh, and yeah, and certainly the certainly you want to avoid doing cuts like that. That one would best probably be best be created by having an express joint here and express joint there. Um, yeah, it actually. So I've just just recently been. Been mucking around with uh, with panel layouts in elevation for for a building using one of these express fibre cement sheet cladding things. It takes hours mucking around with the various different permutations to get something that looks how I say it, random but has an underlying system to it. Because you can look, you can you can just decide. Okay, well, this is where our we're going to have a whole just whole series of vertical joints. That's all we're going to have, and then we have doors and windows in there. The thing is, it's not not architecturally well. It's not it's not so so appealing. But when you start mucking around with okay, these are our door and window head heights at, at 2400. We'll have a panel that's doing this, one that's doing doing that. For example, another one coming here, and you and you have an underlying grid system happening at 600 centres, but Seemingly random-sized pieces. Um, and that's yeah. That's that's the challenge. Um, and you and you see that see that in, in some in some commercial commercial applications where they've, they've chosen a, a seemingly random random layout. There's actually a lot of muck around. There's a lot of Weymouth Street. Right. Yeah. Actually, maybe we will just have a quick look at that that just now. Um, do you know what the address? Uh, it's across from the Grace Emily, um, way down the street. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
just be the empty block. Can we drop the little man yep. in Google Maps? Yep. So, oh, whoops. Grace is in here somewhere. Way mouth. Oh, yeah. Grace, there we are. And it's and it's just across the road from that. That one. Sure, it's there. That one. That block there. If we can see, I'm dropping the little man in. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's yeah. Random in in term well, I, sort of. Oh, is that is that the one you want to talk? The one that has the windows? Yeah, yeah. yeah that is a really interesting. <laughs> Really interesting building. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, slightly different con. Well, same sort of, how to say it, same sort of. I just thought it was cluttered. Like yeah, the, I it think. Precast. Yeah, precast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if we can get a better view of that building. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty cool. Is there, has everybody else seen that that building? Um, way down the street. So we've got what appears to be random sized windows, but there's actually a a continuity of size throughout, so so they're all, you know, so we've got three different sizes or four different sizes of, of windows and then placed in this fashion to, yeah, to provide some visual interest. Now what, um, yeah, can't think of any, uh, no, I can't think of a, a place that's good to show with a five or something sheet cladding. Uh, that shows a slightly random fashion. So now we'll move. We'll move on. So, uh, generally, product installation guides will show top hats fixed to the supporting structure at regular intervals as required. Another thing to be aware of these these things, or well, in regards to these things, is the supporting structure. So, the product manufacturers will. Um, how I say it, they will guarantee their products if installed as per their details. And a handy little way they get you in that is they say you have to use our top hat products. And then they charge a lot of money for those top hats. That's yeah, that is one of the I guess what's you know, part of the way they, they make their money. So you can choose to, to buy that sheeting and put it on a different framing system. So you can buy some cheaper uh, cold rolled steel top hats, but then you you run the risk of that um, that that product not being being certified if there's if it if it has has some issues. So an example of light gauge steel framing is the Rondo Maxi Frame external wall framing system. So the system features larger sections for the window jams referred to as as maxi jams. So you can yeah so you can go with one of these these. Well, Rondo or even even cheaper, cheaper systems for that supporting structure. But there may be issues in in regards to that, to use of that. So that's 